please know that this is all alleged. I've never met any of these people. I've deeply researched all of my information. This is a trigger warning and this I may be talking about or showing sensitive material about some subjects or topics that may be disturbing or upsetting or may bring forth some troubling memories as you've read in the description or title. With that said, either end or now or brace yourself. Aside from that, enjoy. Hello all, welcome back to Mother and Daughter Chat. I hope everyone is having a great day so far. We... No, we're not doing our podcast on scheduled days. Why? Because of the breaking news. I mean, we have to give you breaking news and we have to talk about it when it's breaking because if we wait into Tuesdays and Thursdays, it won't be breaking news anymore. You know what I mean, Lex? Yeah. So today we're going to talk about a few things. But before we talk about a few things, um, my daughter had her birthday yesterday. Yay. Happy birthday to her. Woohoo. Thank you. You enjoy your birthday party yesterday? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we had a wonderful time, wonderful time. So, don't forget to leave your birthday wishes below, okay? All right, now, getting to the start with the show's layout, which, of course, would be in segments. The first segment would be lifestyle talk. The second would be politics and world news. The third would be celeb gossip. And the fourth would be brain food. But we probably won't be doing brain food today because we have so many other topics to talk Amongst the other topics. So I may want the show be dragged out for a long time. But we'll try to be as brief as possible. Okay, you guys? So let's get started. Okay, today's topic, we're talking about branded makeup versus off-branded makeup. This topic should be discussed because, believe it or not, branded and off-branded makeup are made mainly by the same manufacturing company. You know what I mean? Isn't that crazy? It is. So, introspect that you're just paying for the same darn thing. And you're just literally, literally paying for the name. And don't get me started on fake nails. They have you go to the nail shop, you get your nails done. Meanwhile, your real nails are brittle they're thin they won't grow half of the time when they do grow they break off and they look really horrible so what you do you have to get your nails done again so your nails can be pretty and you can't really afford to walk around a week or two weeks or however long it takes for you to revitalize and renew your nails again because you probably have to do presentations maybe your hands have been shown or you just don't want to look at your nails looking all brittle thin and ridiculous you know what i mean yeah so the, the industry is literally a freaking scam and a be realistic here. It's a blood sucking freaking con. Let's be realistic here. I mean, that's what it is, right? Yeah. What do you think, Lexi, about makeup and um, the brittle nails? Um, I think that um, a lot of people want to get their nails done. I'm going to talk about the people who get their nails um, manicured. I'm talking about the people who... Um, who go in and put like fake nails on? There's nothing wrong with that, but I will say that I will, I will say be careful because it's kind of more of a cycle if you want to think about it. I think a lot of beauty stuff is kind of a cycle where you put the fake nails on and it kind of damages your nails trying to get it off because mm-hmm. you end up having like um, there's like a lot of videos on YouTube um, where you soak your hands. Or your nails and like some really strong chemicals to get the um, glue off. It's it's really and then by the time it gets it, you get it off. Your root nails is damaged. So true. And now you have to get like another like set of fake nails on top of them to cover that up. Yep. Because I mean, you getting seen in public. You don't want your nails looking like all I that know, I know, I know. I just yes. So you, a lot of people feel subconscious about that, so they end up getting their nails done again. Exactly. And then your a nails pure, a pure rip off, plain and simple. It is. It really is. That's also like you have to be careful about that. So I will say that if you didn't um, have fake nails, I would say get the stick like the stick on the ones you um, put like maybe like some sticky tape and then mm-hmm. you put the fake nails on top of that and that you, doesn't damage it that doesn't damage your nails no you easily come off or just get a manicure and get your real nails painted yeah, yeah. just take care of re- your real nails if you can yeah I mean do it that way that way your real nails will grow and it'll still look pretty you don't gotta have the long witch nails you know it's <laughs> yeah. freaking unnecessary and speaking from someone who's been wearing nails since she was like 16 years old so when I see the celebrities wearing their nails I just be like been there done that it does not entice me it does not 
convince me I'm oh my gosh so I get my nails this unless I'm doing something where my nails has to be like that but even doing that it's painful because then I have to once again revitalize my nails again you know what I mean yeah and that could be really a pain in the butt but makeup what do you think about makeup though Ooh, makeup is even worse because some makeup um like foundations primers some of the chemicals in there are actually very dangerous for your skin and um some eye powders eye glitters um I should say like the shades the bases some of that like some of the chemicals are really it's not good for your actually some of the glitters are actually dangerous to put it on your eyelids because it's not mm. supposed to go in your eye like you can actually get blind from that you should True. really like people should really look into that yeah because it's very interesting of how they will make glitter to put on top of your eyelids but it can't go in your eyes or it's very dangerous for it to be like anywhere near it because some of the glitter can fall into your eyes. That's and true. And it can blind you permanently. That's true. It's not even that. It's the fact that how much people pay for branded makeup in general. I mean, that's another down factor as well. What do you think of that? Well, some of that is just a plain ripoff because you can actually easily find dupes. Now, a lot of people want to call the dupes cheap and say that, oh, it's not made the same. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. You, you want to know the most interesting fact about this? The interesting fact is, get this, it's made from the same manufacturer. It is. Isn't that crazy? The it same is. manufacturer will actually make two separate brands. Yep. One, it can be very, very well known and popular. Yep. And the second one can be a drugstore brand. But yep. it'll come from the same manufacturer, yep. which means it'll be made the exact same way. Yep. And <laughs> the funny thing about it. You just paying for the name. Is that the palette's could actually end up looking very similar because it's made from the same manufacturer. Which is the reason why a lot of people can find dupes so easily. And a lot of the dupes end up being sold at like the um, drugstores like Walgreens, you know. Places like that. Mm -hmm. Where they sell um, makeup that's not high, high, high brand. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people call it the cheap makeup. But I call it just makeup. Because <laughs> at the end of the Smart day... Smart makeup. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but because at the end of the day, um, a lot of manufacturers will actually um, produce... Um, an off-brand makeup from the same, let's say, like, I don't know. There's a lot of makeup brands, but let's just say, for example, I'm not saying this is a literal case, but I'm saying, for example, let's say that um, you have, like, Too Faced makeup, and they um, come out with a palette, and more well, often than not, their manufacturer will also have a different um, drugstore brand and it's say, like, that drugstore brand wants to actually have a palette that's similar to the um, Too Faced one, more than likely than not, they'll just make the exact same palette. Mm -hmm. But it, they'll have it sold at the drugstore. Yeah. So people can buy it at the drugstore as well. That's the reason why often, like, you'll find easy dupes at the drugstore for a lot of um, popular makeup that's being sold. That's the reason why. Because you can easily find, like, same thing, like, lipstick, shades, you name it. Um, that's why it's so easy to find like another shade of it, especially if it's like um, the brand just came out with it and it's already a dupe mm -hmm. being sold. You know it's from the main manufacturer. Yeah, you know yeah. that. But this is not even just with makeup though. This is with food brands too. That's true. That is definitely true. I think a lot of people don't even know that they're so stuck on the brand. You know, oh, I gotta have this. I gotta have this brand. Woo woo woo. And they just don't know. That's not there. I can say they just don't know the difference. I think they just like the fact of having this branded makeup. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay, our next story, we're going to be talking about why evil people live the longest. Now, do you find it weird that some evil and sinful people live the longest? They have the longest freaking life. While good and innocent people die or sometimes painfully? Yeah, isn't that a thing? It's really weird. You, someone who's been nothing but cruel and just, just vicious and just dark and demonic, live for a long ass time. But the good people suffer and suffer, and sometimes die painfully, and they continue to suffer while the evil people are just living it up. I find that so freaking ironic. I mean, that saying where um evil dies, evil don't die easily or something like that. Yeah, that is so. True. Evil doesn't die easily or some crap like that. That is a freaking truthful freaking statement. It's just really sad how the most evilest people can live so long. I don't know if because 
they don't stress or care about so many things. So therefore the agent kind of, you know, um, don't the client is faster because they really don't care about a lot of things. They don't have no morals. They don't see any repercussions what they're doing. They're not stressed. And if you're not stressing or worrying about which the evil that you're heaping upon people, and if you don't believe in karma, do karma even come upon you if you don't believe in karma? Do that's, you have to actually believe in karma in order to get karma? That's a good question. I'm wondering if you don't believe in it, it doesn't happen to you, or if you just don't have no morals and you don't give two flying figs about anyone but yourself, does that stop the aging process and also prevent you from getting all these health complications because the stress level isn't so high because you're literally a selfish person? Are you telling people to be evil now? No, I'm just <laughs> no, I'm just trying to make sense on why evil people live so long. People say because they sold their soul to the devil, or whatever. First of all, the devil is immortal; he doesn't eat souls, so that's saying is ridiculous. Okay, you can make a deal with the devil, but he doesn't eat your soul. I mean, the demons need your soul, not the devil. That's saying is ridiculous. Now, what do you think about this? Um, the evil people living the longest, Lexi. I think that um, I think it has a lot to do with um, because they said the people who has um are very. Well, people who don't worry or stress all that much tend to have longer lives, and um, who mm -hmm. people who eat certain way keep healthy and like um, keep up a healthy lifestyle and diet. Right, they tend to have um, really really long lives and stuff like that. But but a lot of evil people tend to do that, so they don't tend to worry about anything but themselves. Sure. So a lot of them don't have a lot of stress, and um, mix that with the fact that um, they're very self serving. So a lot of them, a lot of them tend to do things that um, only benefits themselves anyway. So that's why reason why they live the longest. That is definitely true. That is definitely true. So I guess the moral of this point is is that try not to worry about things that you can't control. But don't be heartless and just morally incompetent like some of these people are. But still, you want to just I say do not stress about something that's beyond your control. Yeah. I mean, because what's the use of stressing about it? You know, think about what you can do right now and then move on and leave it there. So these evil people live the longest because they're some selfish people and they only care about themselves, majority of them. And they have, most of them have no morals. So therefore they don't stress. Yeah. The key word, they don't stress. They really do not care. That's why they live the longest. Now what happens after they die, who knows? But that's the moral of the story. That's why evil people live the longest. And they don't believe in karma either. Yeah, so don't stress. Exactly. Alrighty, moving right along here. But let me just say about that karma. Just because karma don't happen to them, to them doesn't mean the karma doesn't happen to their descendants. That's true. Sometimes the evil and the payback can happen to the descendants, their kids, not necessarily them. Yeah. Who pretty much heap the evil. It'll just get pretty much um, repaid and repented through their kids. Okay, moving on to the next topic. This is one of the topics that I've been wanting to talk about for a long time. Do you wear one ring or two rings when you're married? After you're married? Let me say that again. And I'm going to say it correctly this time. I messed up a little bit. Do you wear one ring or two when you're married? Now, again, this is something I have always wanted to discuss because one ring is the new trend after getting married. No one wears two bands anymore. No band to seal in the commitment or show the bond and end this love connection between two people. They don't do that anymore. The engagement ring is the only ring supposed to be the only promise ring and all that stuff now. You just break your engagement ring. So they go, they get married and then they take their engagement ring off and then put it back on. That's really weird. Why would you do that? I know. So it's like, I think taking off your um, engagement ring during the actual bonding agreement is not good. I think it breaks the commitment. It's also flawed and it doesn't stand out. Then you pair with other rings on the other hand, not on that finger, but on the other fingers and stuff on that hand. I think when you get married, that hand, that finger should only contain that wedding ring. No other rings should cloud or distract it. I think it sets a bad omen. I mean, wear your rings on the other hand because you suppose you're supposed to have the engagement ring. Okay. The engagement ring is the promise. Let me just say this because I don't think a lot of people know what the, the two rings mean. Okay? Okay. Okay. So, the band is to seal the commitment. 
or show the bond and in this love connection between two people because you read the band and he read the band. That's what connects you. It's an endless circle. It never ends and never breaks. So that's why the bands between a husband and wife or a husband, husband or woman, whatever the gender may be, that's why the bands are similar because it connects you two with, with each other. That's why you make that promise in front of your family and friends, that agreement, that promise, that commitment. That's what the band is for. The engagement ring is only the promise. That's all it is. So in your eyes, then, like the enga- it would be the engagement ring and then the band from the wedding ring. Yes. See, the engagement, he gives you the engagement, you promise to marry him. And then once you get married, you both make that commitment and you show that bond and that dedication, if you want to call it, and that connection between before God, your family, friends, whoever you believe in, that what that's what really endlessly bond you. That's the committed thing. You both put on rings. Not take off your engagement ring and put it back on. You both put on a band. It can be a diamond brand, a crested band, but it's always an endless band that goes around and around. However it's designed is your prerogative, but that's what connects you. Then I have um I have a question for you then. Okay. So okay. So you said that you believe the engagement ring is the promise and then the band you get at the wedding is the um promise to like a sealing of that promise to each other mm-hmm. pretty much death to you apart. Exactly. So in certain cases, yeah. So in that case then do you think that guys should get an engagement ring too? Well, I mean, he asked you and you promised to marry him, so whoever asks the question and who promised who, that's what it is. Interesting. So he you he asked you, get on down on one knee, would you marry me, be my wife? And you promised, yes, I I will marry you. That's the promise. That engagement ring is the promise. The wedding band, like you said, the wedding band seal in that promise. It makes it official. The commitment. And the band, which is the endless circle, shows the endless love connection between two people because it's mirror image of the person who you committed to. Yeah. You can't do that with an engagement ring. Okay, he has on a band. Are you married? Is that a costume jury? You get confused. And I think people are taken away that I think. And then they start and they have the wedding ring. And then they pair other rings on their hand. So, okay, I don't know if you married or, if, or is this just regular costume jury. I think once you get married, the only ring that should accompany that hand if you're married is your wedding bands. You know, your wedding and your engagement. That's the only thing that should be on that hand. I don't know. You have your other hand. I don't you know. You have a whole five fingers over here. You can put a gazillion rings on top of each other. If you like that, you do your thing. Leave this. I think because I think no other rings, and I'm going to say this again, no other rings should clout or distract it. I think it sets a bad omen. I mean, wear your rings on the other hand. I think it sets a bad omen because you clouding it with other rings. It's like you're trying to distract people from you being married. Is this some kind of reverse symbol crap that you saying like I really don't want people to know I'm married I'm just wearing it because people so he can say that I'm wearing it but I really don't want to wear it I, I get what I get what you're saying I understand it but I don't know like I don't know it's look you I can't tell that, if they're married with just an engagement you don't even look right look I feel that like I feel that you wear your ring but it shouldn't matter what you put on the hand I do understand you saying that you shouldn't put rings that would distract or make it um, confusing when you're wearing your wedding ring where people can literally sit there questioning. Are like, you married or is it just costume jury? Yeah. <laughs> I do feel that like um, maybe like a ring or two is fine. As long as it's not like um, attention grabbing to the point where it's where it looks like you're just only wearing jewelry on that hand and that's it. But yeah. that's that's how I feel. Like, I you, understand. You can wear other rings on the, on the hand. Just make sure it doesn't like distract or But something. it does. It does. Not all rings. Yes, it does. I looked at a picture of Jennifer Lopez, right? And I think Jennifer Lopez do believe in the two thing, but she likes to, you know, be with the the common theme right now, which is one ring. But she was always a two ring kind of person too. Um, and I solely agree with Sierra because she's a two ring person too. She wear, I think she has three rings actually. So I I, I like that in her too. But um, Jennifer Lopez had on a ring, and I think she just had the engagement ring on. I don't know if she had another ring. I don't know. I'm not sure. I didn't look at her that well. But she had other rings on her other hand. And it took the, the attention away from the wedding ring. Because I was looking at the other. I'm like, and in her other hand, she just only had one ring on. I was like, 
Okay, <laughs> you can put that on the hand. See, I just think it just set precedence to the future. It's a bad old man. That's the old saying. I'm saying the only ring that's for when you get married. First of all, it's, it's actually a, a bad omen to even wear a ring on that finger anyway because it blocks marriage. Well, in that like, case, and I'm going to keep wearing rings on that finger. Of course, if you're like yourself and you don't want to get married anyway, wear, wear rings on that finger only, you know. But it does set precedence to not have a proposal or to get married because you're blocking your blessing, your whatever you want to call it. And I am a living witness of that being true. Because I hardly ever wore rings on that finger. And I don't even want to tell you how many... The point of the matter is, it's a true saying. Okay? And when you get married, the only thing that's supposed to be on this finger, in this hand, is a wedding ring. You have a whole goddamn other hand to wear rings. That's unless you really don't want to get married. You're confused and you're putting other rings on other hands. And people begin confused with their costume jewelry and that's your wedding ring. And stop with the one ring stuff. It's stupid. You cannot take off your engagement ring and then put it back on. Where's the promise? It's an engagement ring. You do know there are times engagement rings are heavy. So you have the option now if you have a wedding band to just wear your band. People still know you're married because that band is an endless timeless symbol that never dies. Some people don't even have an engagement ring. They only have a band. But you know when you look at that man and his band, he's married. Am I right? You mm-hmm. look at that female, you look at that in this band on that finger, and it don't have to be fancy. This could be a regular, classic, old gold band. You know that they're married. You cannot do that with an engagement ring. And no one wants to walk around with a heavy-ass engagement ring. With the wedding band, you have the option to just, I'm just going to wear my wedding band. I think Kim Kardashian, when she got robbed, she just wore her wedding band. We still knew she was married because she wore her wedding. She never took it off. It's one thing I can say about her. She never took it off. And neither did Kanye West. He just wore his band. That's it. Engagement rings only set a bad omen for that marriage. You know what I mean? Beyonce. Beyonce, she is another one. She took off her engagement ring and put it back on. And they had 50 rings since then. I don't, I don't know what the hell's going on with those two. I'm just saying. Sierra, although there are so many predictions that Sierra and her husband is not going to last... But those two are known for wearing their rings. Am I right? Yeah. And then you have... See, it sets a bad omen. Same thing with Jada Pinkett and uh, Will Smith. They had issues with their rings. It sets a bad omen for that entire marriage. You know what I mean? But that's just my opinion. Tell me your opinions below. Let's move on to the next. Okay, this next one, we're going to talk about President Biden. He's running for a second term. This is what it says, and I'm reading verbatim from a news blog. Okay, it says, this is on Yahoo News, I believe. President Joe Biden made it official on Tuesday via video. He's running for a second term. And you can't bet holding on to Michigan is a big part of his plans for winning re-election in 24. Fact is, it's hard to see how he succeeds without fending off of your public challenge in the Great Lakes state which is Wisconsin and Chicago and stuff like that. Fortunately for him, he's got a pretty good record in Michigan, having walloped Senator Bernie Sanders of Vermont in the 22 Democratic primary and then defeating then-President Donald Trump by three percentage points or 154,188 votes to be exact. Oh, yes. I must admit, he has done some fantastic things. He got us past the pandemic and Medicare somewhat improved. You know what? No, I can't lie like that. Biden forced millions to take the vaccine. And then two years later, the myth up. You know what? Never mind. Move right along here. However, the Haiti thing, I cannot get past. Okay? Our people and our children being killed by guns. And he sent billions to freaking Ukraine. No. We need someone who is for the people. That means everybody. That means senior citizens still holding on to the HSA even though they're 65 years old. They need that extra cushion for life. I don't know why they have to end their HSA just because they're freaking over 65 years old. I think it's stupid. Here, is this a health savings account? You know what I mean? What do you think, Alexis? Because I was about to really start snapping. No, I agree with you. Oh, actually, that is one thing I think about a lot more. And it's crazy because you probably think about what is there to think about when you like get old or something. Because a lot of people don't think about it when they're in their 20s because they're like, well, I'm young, you know, I don't have to worry about that right now. But I feel that the time for you to um, start thinking about retirement is actually when you're very young, when you are in your 20s. Yeah, I want you to think like that, yeah. Because 
more often than not, a lot of people don't know this. I know mm. people my age tend to not know this either. <laughs> is that, um, believe it or not, retirement is something that you should start thinking about when you're 20. And if you want yes. my opinion for what I have read and what I have researched, honestly, people, you really need to look into this. It gets really dark very quickly. A lot of people claim other people retirement funds um, by... This is why you should be very careful about where you use and where you stay and what you put your social security number. Yep. Because people can very easily pretend to be you and then take your retirement funds. And by the time it's time for you to retire, you have no money. Yep. At all. So if you want my opinion, if your company or job say that, hey, we'll take care of your retirement funds for you. That can be easily claimed. I say you should take care of that personally. Yes. Having a personal savings account. Not like something that's controlled with the government or controlled with some company. Because actually companies can screw you over with that too. Yeah. I have read horror stories about that. People wanted to retire and a company used that money to like fix some company crap. I'm just saying. That is definitely true. What it, do you it, think it, about President Biden running for 2024? 20, I say that. Um, for a second term. We need to look at other Democrats for yes. the second term. Yes. Yeah, so don't you think we need someone for the people? We need someone who is more young. I'm sorry. I'm getting sick of these old detached people. Oh. Like these people who are either too rich to be normal or too, for their own kind. Yeah. Like we need someone who is more modern. Someone who's a little bit more younger. Yes. Someone who can speak for this generation. And for That's, all people, not yes, just his. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like someone who, like, um, who understands not just the old generation, the old ways, but People, someone who is more modern, like who can yes. speak for people who are alive and more young do, during this time frame, this generation. Yes. And this is the age of technology for crying out loud. We need someone who grew up with technology, not grow up uh, and then technology started booming. You know, we need someone who grew up with tech, someone mm. who can speak on the behalf of this generation and where it's going because it's going where technology is going to keep booming and it's going to keep being more prominent in people's lives and we need a president who understands that and we need a president who understands the issues that's going on for um today because the pandemic affected a lot of people like it, it really did and um, more often than not a lot of people don't know this but um parlaying into Biden. So when you think about re-election, people think about this. A lot of people are online a lot more. And a lot of people are, surprisingly, they're getting into niche stuff that I thought was just for the nerds. But... <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm speaking, of, I'm speaking on this because, like, I'm a nerd myself. This is not an insult. But, um, yeah, and a lot of people get into a lot of different things. And they're getting, um, they're branching out with entertainment so yes we need a president who understands where things are going things are, are a little bit different now and um tech it's becoming very more normalized i mean there's tech and jobs people work from home we yes. need a president who understands that because Biden was trying to force people to stop working from home he's like we need to get him out of the house like i'm just saying this is I understand that but still yeah you know. And we need a president who understands things are different. Yes. Time is moving forward. Yes. And we need a president who is willing to march forward with time. Yes. Not trying to make a stand still in the sand and trying to fight against it because they don't understand that this generation tends to be at home a lot more. That is true. That is true. <laughs> and instead of trying to force them to like go to work, because a lot of people find working from home to be more convenient, and it's a lot more durable, actually. Um, yes. A lot of teens and students, a lot of them, um, nowadays, school, high schools and college, they give you the option if you want to um, do online schooling versus if you want to go up to a physical building. Some people can't physically go to a, a school. Yeah. So, it's I, I like the fact that people have more options now, because before, you didn't have that option. Like, you had to actually try to make that work, and if you couldn't, look. Yeah, I know. And then you have being a fear of being killed while you're in school because yeah. a lot of campuses, a lot of kids are getting shot That's up. true. That's true. So it's always that fear, too. I mean, gun control has been really crazy. They need to bring that back. Oh, yeah, they definitely do. But let's move on to another Biden. He's the center subject of our today politics here. Biden reduced the sentences of 31 nonviolent drug offenders. U.S. President Joe Biden on Friday reduced the prison sentences of 31 convicted of drug-related crimes using the presidency powers to case punishment for nonviolent offenses. 
all of the sentences are now set to end on June 30th with the remainder of their time to be served as in home confinement. This week, Biden launched his bid for a second term in 2024 election. The Democratic president faces pressure to show progress on racial and criminal justice issues. The United States has less than 5% of the world's population, but a fifth of its prisoners. Oh, yes. A share are people of color who compromise a sizable chunk of Biden's support base, believe it or not. The announcement came as the White House unveiled a 77-page plan to reduce unnecessary incarcerations, support rehabilitation for imprisoned people, and help those getting out of prison re-enter society more successfully. I think that's a really good idea. Yeah. Biden has reduced sentences or outright pardoned more than 100 individuals. Most were drug-related cases. He also pardoned a group of thousands more who had been convicted of simple marijuana possession. I agree. But we know he's only doing this to get the votes of color and Negroes and Hispanics to be realistic here. See, people don't... I don't think people of color, Negro, Hispanic, I don't think they know how powerful they are. It's the reason why presidents always go after the urban community, okay, to get a vote. People say, oh, we're the, we're the minority. We're not the minority. If we were the minority, who cares if we vote? You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Who gives a flying fig if we vote? Okay, we don't vote. Okay, let the Caucasians vote. Because we're not the minority. We are the majority. And that includes colored Negroes, Hispanics. We are pretty much a huge percentage of the world population, including the United States. They only lie to us so we can always feel like we're the minority. Yeah. And we're, we don't have a voice and we don't have the power in numbers. They want to make sure we stay in our place. Hence why they're always bringing up slavery. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. then whitewashing our histories and hence why they want us to learn our history. Every other race has gotten their, what they call the reparations, but not us. Why? Because, and Hispanics, because they don't want us to know our history. They don't want to know how much of our history has been stolen and whitewashed. But that's a whole nother subject. Biden, I do I agree with him, going to jail for 20 million years for marijuana possession is ridiculous. Going to jail for unpaid parking tickets is ridiculous. Going to jail for 10 years because of bad child support is dumb too. Let's help this brother get a job so he can pay his child support and be a father to his kids. I think a lot of... Um, Some of these charges are ridiculous. I think a lot of, of prison sentences are ridiculous. I only think it's... Um, okay, first of all, this is, what, this is what I mean when I say it's ridiculous. I think it's ridiculous that a person can go to jail for 25 to 30 years for smoking. But then you have a murderer who killed 10 people and he only went to jail for 10 years or I think, less than that exactly there's something wrong with that <laughs> how can so you're telling me life is cheaper and better and less immoral than mm -hmm. someone smoking in his garage yeah those, those are caucasian people who get off easy like that if it was a colored person or a negro they'd probably be thrown in jail for 15 20 years but I'm just saying though, like mm -hmm. there's something wrong with that. Like that, like mm -hmm. it should be even across the board. There shouldn't be, I agree. Like any type of, there, there shouldn't be, there shouldn't be a range like in that, like especially to that drastic degree. I feel like a lot of judges, especially racist ones, they have way too much power to, to do something that like, there should be a limit is what I'm saying. There should be a hard limit when it comes to how much you can send to someone like how many years you could sit to someone for something that's not like that's not a big deal something that's more trivial that is so true that is so true and um not only that though i think that we should go on to the next topic the little mermaid because i'm very curious about that okay going to the next top topic yeah this topic here is about little mermaid now, the movie Little Mermaid has been released on May 26th, correct? Yes. Okay. Usually has mixed reviews. They've been having mixed reviews since they released a teaser last year. They said they complained about how her race, and now they complain about her dark tint of the trailer. They have fixed it since then, and everything else. Always something. You know what? It's crazy because Caucasians can play our people in movies, such as Cleopatra. Hell, the name even sounds like a colored Negro, Okay. The Gods of Egypt, that movie, heck, the list goes on. The whitewashing is ridiculous. 
But they want to nitpick and take apart and judge the Little Mermaid. When the places where these Little Mermaids and her sisters are literally African Negro people populated. They come from those type of places. So don't they supposed to be that color anyway? All of them supposed to be Negroes. Yeah. Africans or whatever you want to call us. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So now I see the Little Mermaid is going back to his roots. Whether you believe in mermaids or not. But history has been said by explorers. Even your boy uh, Columbus trafficking behind. He was said in his journals he ran across mermaids. Pirates back in the day. Even said they saw Little Mermaid. I think they called them something else at the time. But they claimed they saw Little Mermaids as well. Well not Little Mermaids. I'm saying that title. But they saw mermaids in general. Yeah. So it may be a possibility that mermaids exist. You look at hieroglyphics. You see that they draw some of these little entities with fish tails and things of that nature. Or were they doing it just for some artistic creativity? Or were they drawing from life or carving from life should I said yeah you know what I mean I don't know what do you think I think that well where there's smoke there's some fire right oh yeah and um well a lot of art is derived from real life and I think that myths start somewhere so maybe they did see something I mean this was years like years ago mm. and a lot of people don't know how a lot of things were built a lot of things happened and I feel like there's more to what happened back then than what we know currently. Oh, uh, hell yeah. Absolutely. So, maybe mermaids really did exist at some point. Yeah, I can't, watch, I can't wait to watch The Little Mermaid. I think it's going to be great. I think uh, the person who's playing it, Haley, Bailey, whatever her name is, I think she's going to be very, very fabulous. And I can't wait to watch it. I'm sure it's going to be great. And I'm sure the racist Caucasians and whoever else is going to do their criticism like they do everything else. I remember when they made a black Annie, Annie. They had a fit about that. She's not black. What are you doing? Whoa, whoa, whoa. And they made sure that movie did not become a hit. I think... I and I think the movie was great. I think Jamie Foxx did excellent. Yeah, I agree. I think Black Annie, the movie was really, really good. A lot of people... Mm-hmm. The critics slaughtered it, but it was amazing. I know. I still watch it. I think it's amazing. I think they need to shut up. Stop playing us then. We, we Okay, we can't play the original race of these movies, but it's okay for you to play us. Yeah. You know, it's okay if you can play us and whitewash our history, but we can't do the same for your quote unquote made up fiction uh, stories. Whatever. Just go sit down somewhere, please, and go read a book. Okay, let's move on to the Red Table Talk. Okay, the Red Table. On Wednesday evening, Red Table Talk, the Emmy Award winning talk show hosted by Jada Pickett Smith, her daughter, Willow Smith, and her mother, Adrienne Banfield Norris, was canceled by Meta. This announcement comes on the heels of the departure of Mina Lefebvre, the former head of development and programming at Meta. Mina exited the company as part of the most recent round of layoffs this month. And with her exit came the loss of the last of the Facebook Watch original programs, which is Red Table Talk. The Red Table Talk features three generations of a famous family. It is known for its candid, open conversations with a dash of drama. We all remember the iconic entanglement moment, don't we? Uh, Yeah. This may, will, mark five years since the beginning of the talk show. And its most recent, but perhaps not final episode, aired on December 19, 2022. So it means it may have been canceled because they couldn't afford to fund it, among other reasons. You see, Facebook has been declining for years. People are venturing off on TikTok and lately, Zuckerberg's Instagram has become a copy version of TikTok. I wonder if the creators of TikTok know about this. What do you think about this, Lexi? I think that... Well, Meta is actually losing a lot of money because they tried to do this VR thing with their headset. But um, I read that the people who did buy it, they did enjoy the VR experience, but I think... um, I think it went flat when... there was. I think they was doing too much because then it was forcing people to get... Like Facebook accounts, it was like a home time mess. But I think that Meta started losing money when um, they just—it was just it's like no one trusts Facebook. I'm sorry, like don't people do not trust Facebook? They really don't. I don't know where he—I don't know where he thought he was—he was going with that idea. But that's neither here or there. I think the Red Table Talk. I think it met its conclusion, and I think it's being canceled. It just—it met its conclusion. 
It did. It did. It was about time. I mean, I am a fan of Zuckerberg in terms of his originality and him not just being an investor. He really knows what he's doing. Facebook does keep families connected. It was the start of that kind of thing. So he did start to trend. I thank him for that. You know, but yeah. um, I think he probably needs to move on to move, you know, better things now, which I'm assuming that's what he's trying to do. So, uh, but people don't like, I don't, I don't know. Like, look, look, look. I just I wish she wasn't Facebook. so. I wish she just wasn't so copyrighted. You know, I don't trust saying. Facebook. I'm sorry. A lot of people don't. A lot of people definitely don't. Okay, so let's move on to Winnie Houston. I want to dance with somebody. Movie review. Uh, my daughter and I just got to watching it. Believe it or not, before this podcast, and the movie is beautiful. I think the actress that plays it. Um, I think her name Naomi Hackey. Is that her name? Naomi, Naomi Hackey. A- 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 yeah, Aki, I believe that's her name. She is fabulous. You can tell she can sing. I always told my daughter, you know, a good lip singer has to be a real singer. Yeah. Because that's the only way it's going to be real. Jennifer Lopez playing freaking... I think we just wanted to see a recreation of the beautiful late Selena Quintanilla that we was ready for anybody. That's true. Because you go true. back in that movie, her lip singing was terrible. It was. The part where she sang, if I could fall... And, it was bad. It was bad. I mean, her lip trembles didn't make sense. She's, she was making her lips contort in very weird ways that a real singer would not do when singing that note. I mean, personally speaking, I like to go back and, like, watch the ridiculous, like, singing moments. It just makes me laugh. I actually have done it. I'm like, well, how did I miss this? That's, that's crazy. Because I remember when I watched it the first time, I do remember enjoying it so much. I remember praising it. But it could be just because I really did like Selena's mu- music. Yeah. And I really did want to see, like, because I never got to see her in person or in concert or anything like that. So, the only, I guess the only part or chance I really did get to see mm-hmm. um, Selena was through um, someone acting her in a movie. So, I guess I probably just enjoyed that movie so much just because... You know, she was being Selena. I know. We just wanted to see her again and stuff like that. Aside from that, the acting was good. And it was one of... It was Jennifer Lopez's breakout moment. Yeah, her acting... Um, Jennifer Lopez can act. I'm not yes, I'm not yes. knocking her on that. And the dancing was nice. She was right on point with that. You yeah. Know, the, the lip syncing was... Uh, now that I go back and look at it... The lip syncing was wasn't the, the greatest. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway... But this movie, Winnie Houston, Naomi was beautiful. You can tell she can sing. She's from... Lake. Actually, you know what? She's not even American. She's actually Naomi Hackey is an English actress, believe it or not. Interesting. Yes, she is. Talk she about was, a plot twist. Yes, yeah, she was born in London, England, so she has the British accent, as you can see. That's how she talked. Wow, she had me full. Well, I mean, that's why she was probably able to, you know, do that because she's able to diverse and change up her voice like many English artists can. Wow. Honestly, I give her Look at props. Thomas Ellis, the, the man who played Lucifer. He can do English and he can do British as well. Because he's a very diverse actor. I just... She she deserves some type of an award for this. Oh, like, she, was, she did amazing. Mm, her mannerisms. She was beautiful. Let's give her a hand clap, people. Seriously. <laughs> seriously. It's, it's not like often I will actually um, compliment when it comes to acting in movies. Because my mom can vouch for this. But it's really hard for me okay it's really hard for me to um get lost in a movie and get lost in um what i'm watching because usually the acting can distract me sometimes especially if the acting is not that good and then it's hard for me to get connected with what's trying to be portrayed on the screen if the mm-hmm. acting or the actor or actress they're just not really good at um, connecting to their character and so for true. me i can i can tell when that's not happening I don't know, that could be because my interest in that in, in general. Yeah, because that's why you were able to pick apart because you, you're an actress yourself, so you know what to look for. And I do the same thing with directing, editing videos and camera angles and stuff like that and scripts and stuff. Like, I can tell the ending of a movie or anything because I mean, know where the script is going. Yeah. And I guessed it so many times. That's so true. <laughs> it's so difficult watching a movie with like any kind of twist because she will get it. She will guess it right on every single time. Yeah, because I know where the writer is going. So that's really, that's a really true statement. So Naomi, you did amazing. I hope she you did amazing. Oscar. She did amazing. Okay, next we're going to talk about Kanye West's lyrics, So Heartless. Oh my god, It's so true. It's so freaking true. My daughter and I realized that Kanye West's Heartless lyrics were about Kim and him. Did he predict his fate or future? Here are the lyrics. In the night I hear him talk, the coldest story ever told, somewhere far along this road, he lost his soul to a woman so heartless. How could you be so heartless? Oh, how could you be so heartless? 
How could you be so cold as the winter wind when it breathes? Yo, just remember that you talking to me, though. You need to watch the way you talking to me, yo. I mean, after all the things that we've been through, I mean, after all the things we got into, I, hey, yo, I know of some things that you ain't told me and now you want to get me back and you're going to show me. So you want to walk around like you don't know me. You got a new friend. Well, I got homies, but in the end, it's so lonely. And then the hook, blah, blah, blah. And he goes and say, talking, 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 talk. Baby, let's, let's just knock it off. They don't know what we've been through. They don't know about me and you. So I got something new to see. And you just going to keep hating me. And we just going to be enemies. I know you can't believe I could just leave it wrong. And you can't make it right. I'm going to take off tonight into the night. So this is literally Kim Kardashian in so many ways. She flooded her boy toy in front of, in front of him. And she was so cold and heartless in so many different freaking ways. That's true. He did lose his soul to a woman that was so heartless. That's true. Soon as things got too great and too bad for Kim, after four freaking kids, she said deuces. I'm sorry. If I have four kids by you, we are in this, okay? No way in hell will be a single mother. No. We have four kids. I'll be another Beyonce. Let him get his little cheating on out of the system. And then we go ahead and do this thing. I don't know. I don't know. Four kids. I don't know. I don't know. My heart, like, look. I Okay, I personally want to do that. I'm going to be realistic. I don't here. know. I, but I believe in happiness. I don't like, think that was the case with those two, though. We didn't hear about Kanye West. I think he claimed he cheated once on her during the early parts of their marriage or relationship. And that's it. We didn't hear about any other cheating. That's true. And their marriage didn't break up because of his endless cheating. Like we heard about, you know, uh, Jay-Z still oh, doing. Oh, yeah, that's true. That's embarrassing true. cheating. Yeah, that's that's true. not why. So that was something, if if it was going on privately, we didn't know. So she could hit that. But the point I'm trying to make is she left because it got so freaking crazy. And she couldn't handle it. That's what Kim always do. That's true. If it kind of distort from her image of her facade or her fame she let it go it's not a marriage it's a opportunity yeah for a business move and what happened she got married to kanye sucked his soul because he literally lost his soul with the goddamn woman and became a billionaire and moved the hell on and now she rumor is she want him back because her limelight is no longer bright anymore so they need someone to feed off love like some freaking leeches but you gotta admit this song is just it's it's accurate. It's accurate, accurate. As hell. It's so accurate. You gotta admit, it's accurate. As hell it is. Too. It's scary. Do Very. you think that he manifested this? No, I just think he just maybe he has a gift. He probably has a gift. But maybe then again, some people, some people are really good at predicting. Yes, they are. I mean, I think he probably predicted this a lot. Of, he remember he said he wanted one with a big butt, blah blah blah, and have four kids. Oh my gosh, that's so true. Most of his songs, his prediction, what he wanted, he got. Oh, you know he could have manifested. Well, we remember like that um that um clip that went um viral a little bit when he said like I, I miss the old Kanye. Oh yeah, and like and everything he said in that mm-hmm. it happened. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they say you can manifest what you want. Maybe. That saying is true, and you know you and I are living witnesses of that. So, are you, do you think that he manifested all this? He manifested all this. Interesting. Yeah, he wanted out. He he got out. You know, I hope his life is blissful and peaceful. I hope he's very successful. He deserves it. He's a creative genius. And the people who walked over him, I hope they just reap what they sow in three, four, five, tenfold. And I'm just speaking because I know how it feels to be used. Yeah. And thrown away like some discarded paper plate. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So that's all we have for today. Stay tuned for our next podcast. I hope you love this breaking news. Love you all. Bye. Bye. Hi everyone. Hello. Welcome to our bloopers. This particular clip that I decided to leave in because I wanted you guys to get inside a behind the scenes peek of the drama that we have to go through sometimes. This particular blooper is my daughter being very picky on what app she want to use to pull up the script. See, I don't I, think I'm picky though. You are picky. Not really. Look, I type a script. It, it's not a script telling us what to say. It's just a script 
literally giving us the bullet points of the subject I need to say. So I take it from an article or a blog or something like that. As you hear me say all the time doing the podcast, oh, uh, this is from whatever website, blah, blah, blah. That's the only thing that's really on the script. Everything else we're talking about is freestyle. Yeah. And she was been picky on what program she wants to use on her iPad to pull up the cockamamie script. I am not picky. This is what I have to go through most of the time with my picky daughter. I just don't want certain apps on certain devices. Anyway, enjoy it, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Get it open already? I tell uh, you, this girl gotta get her. You just t- doing too much. I mean, Why didn't you have me send it to uh, put it in your text message? Oh, you can't open that because without your Apple password. No, I don't want my um, car Microsoft anywhere on this iPad. Okay, this thing be glitchy sometimes. It acts weird. You gotta do all this for a damn script. Yeah, because you don't want me to read like, it off my darn phone. You always take you like 20 minutes to get the damn script. Because you don't want me to read it off the phone. You'd be so particular. Like, I want you to actually... I sent it to it your text. You get your text message on your iPad. Okay, but it opens it up for OneDrive, and I'm not typing in my Microsoft. Get over the Microsoft thing. I'm not doing that, okay? Like, then I'm how are you going to get the script? Don't worry about it. Well, let me know when you get it, because you're wasting time. You don't even know what I'm talking about. You gotta listen to what I'm saying. You know, the second text I was trying to send you didn't turn out so well, so screw that one. Are you sure you sent it to the right Gmail? Because um, cause the Gmail that I got is like, um, here, can, can you send us a PDF or something? Why don't you just sign into your OneDrive? And stop I'm tripping. not doing that. Just send it as a PDF. I sent it because that's what you told me to send it to. I know, I know, I got that, but I'm saying like, Cause like, look, you said because you sent it as you see the X at the end of that doc. You sent it as um, a Word document, so I can't open it up or anything underneath but Word. Because you don't want to put your password in. I'm not doing that. <sighs> Just send it as is either resend it again as a regular doc with no X at the end of it, or just send it as a PDF. Or you can just freaking open you your one drive. I'm not doing. I'm not doing that. Okay, I'm not doing that. You're making this hard on yourself. I don't care. Just send it as a regular doc. I am not doing that. Just send it as a regular doc. It's either send it as a regular doc or this podcast is going to be scrapped then. Or you just be piggybacking off of what I'm saying. As you always do anyway if we have a goddamn script. So does it even matter? Yes, it matters. All right. You know what? Here. I'll just see. Maybe this is the PDF. I don't know. See if that's the PDF. You get it finally? Yeah, I got the script. <sighs> crying out loud. It did not have to be this complicated. Yeah, you could just sign it to your Microsoft. Or you could have just sent it as a regular doc. Or you could just sign it to your Microsoft. Or send it as a regular doc. Or anyway. I'm not doing this Microsoft crap again. I think it got hacked so easily because of my darn iPad. I can't control a lot of stuff with this iPad. Okay, fine. Fine. I'll just send it in PDF format all the time. Good. Jeez. Well, that's it for today's podcast. Tune in for Tuesday's podcast. Oh, yes, we're here every Tuesday and Thursday, y'all, and we have a lot more coming, no filter, especially you, Mom. Anyway, talk to you all later. Well, (laughs) bye-bye.